Hello everyone, welcome to another Wings of Fire days. This is going to be the day two for Clay. This is going to be when he first meets Peril in Scarlet's Arena after they escape the mountain. Alright, so we're going to start off reading on in chapter 14, page 119. The Queen's prisoners were kept in the sky. For the whole first day, Clay kept his eyes shut. His talons gripped the rocks below him so tightly he started to lose feeling in his legs. One glance over the edge, one glimpse of the dizzying drop below him, and he feared he would lose consciousness and fall. With his wings folded over clamped and clamped, in skywing metal clips, falling meant death, horrible, painful, bone-shattering death. But then he wasn't entirely sure if that would be worse than Queen Scarlet's plan for them, whatever they were. A narrow stone platform gave him just enough room to walk in a circle and lie down. There were no walls. There were no roof. There was only open blue sky and the fierce wind whistling around his ears day and night. On the second day, a hunk of meat hit him in the face. Hunger forced his eyes open. An unusual skywing dragon was flying in loops around his perch. He guessed she was only a year or two older than him. Her horns were full full size, but her teeth were still sharp and white, not yet blunted or stained. Veins of gold ran through her glimmering copper wings, and smoke seemed to be rising from her scales as well as her mouth. She stopped and hovered in front of him. Her eyes were startling, like two small blue flames blazing through smoke. Clay was pretty sure normally Skywings had orange or yellow eyes. He wondered if there was something wrong with this one like Sunny. Something dead and bloody and charred lay on the stone in front of him. Clay took one look at the blood, remembering the shape of Dune's broken neck, and threw up over the side of the platform. To his surprise, the other dragon started laughing. Oh, gross, she said. Too bad the barracks aren't down there. The guards seriously deserve that. Unwillingly, Clay looked over the edge. His rock tower prison was one of, of about a hundred spires, spread out in a huge circle. Nearly everyone had a dragon trapped at the top, like him. Like him, they each had thin metal clamps on the outer edges of their wings. In the center of the circle was a bowl of rock, like an empty lake, with sand at the bottom and sheer walls. Above the walls were rows of benches, balconies, and caves for spectators to look down into the arena. At the bottom of his tower, there was only bare rock, but from up here he could see the heart of the Skywing Kingdom stretched across the mountaintop. Queen Scarlet's vast palace was carved in the gray and black rocks of the peak. Half of it was inside tunnels and caves, while the other half was open to the sky, bristling with defenses. Fire-colored dragons crawled across the mountain face, digging and blasting out new palace extensions until they were covered in stone dust and dirt, and looked no brighter than mudwings. The war had slashed his kingdom with sharp talons. Clay spotted collapsed towers, scorch marks along several walls, and a ravine full, half full of dragon bones. Even as he watched, he saw two Skywings carrying a corpse of a crimson dragon and dump it in the ravine, then set fire to the body and hovered for a moment over the smoke, their wings brushing against each other. Then they wheeled and flew away, leaving the body to blaze down into the ashes and singed bones. Far off to the east, Clay could see the blue, glittering light of the sea. He also noticed the thin wires that twisted around his legs and neck. He'd been too terrified and confused to pay attention to what the Skywings did with him when they first arrived. The wires stretched from him out to the necks and legs of the other prisoners, who all had them as well. One went to his left to one leg of a moon-silver ice wing on the next column, who was asleep with her tail over her nose. One wire was attached to the dragon on his right, a thumbing sand wing, whose pacing made the wire shake. The last three wires snaked out across the circle. He couldn't tell where those wires went. They disappeared into a tangled web at the bolt in above the bowl. Connected all the trapped dragons below, so even if Scarlet Queen Scarlet's captives could fly away, they'd have to lift off all at once. And then all 100 prisoners would be stuck with each other. They wouldn't get very far that way. He wondered what would happen if one of the dragons fell off the spire. Would the wires drag down all the others as well? Aren't you going to eat? asked the Skywing, who was flapping around him. I'm not hungry, Clay said, tucking his head under his wing. 
He could hear her wing beats as he, she circled him a few t more times. Is it the wrong thing? She asked. I don't know what mud wings eat. We've never had one before. You know, because we're on the same side of the war. So that would be rude. Taking them prisoner, I mean. But you're in the Talents of Peace, so the mud wings don't, won't care what we do with you. Come on, you have to eat something. Why? Clay asked, keeping his head buried. Because I don't want you to die before I kill you, she said. Her tone's so matter-of-fact that it took Clay a few moments to register what she'd said. He poked out his snout and stared at her. I've never fought a mudwing, she said, deftly avoiding the wires as she looped around him again, since we're our allies and all. So, I'm really curious. I bet it's totally different from fighting sea wings and ice wings. But Her Majesty will make you fight some of the regular prisoners first, and if you die, then I don't get to fight you. And that would be sad, Clay said. Right, not blazing at all. The most blazing will be the Nightwing, though. No one's ever seen anything like that. What if he can read my mind and knows what I'm going to do before I do it? She tilted her wings and swooped underneath Clay. At least he's eating. Hey, I wonder if she'll make you fight each other. But then I'd only get to fight one of you. Do you think that I could beat the Nightwing? Probably not, huh? Starflight? Clay said. Is he alright? Where is he? He stood up and peered out at the circle of prisoners. It wasn't so bad as long as he didn't look down. He could see several blue and green dragons who must be sea wings, but none of them were close enough to identify were Tsunami. Most of the trap dragons were sea wings, ice wings, or sand wings. They must be prisoners of war. A few were red or orange sky wings. He guessed those were subjects who had somehow displeased the queen. Only one prisoner was midnight black, and he was nearly the opposite side of the circle from Clay. So far away. Clay couldn't see his face, but he could tell that Starflight was sitting still in his helpful, terrified stalagmite pose, his head drooping. If only he could read minds, Clay wished desperately that he could get a message across the arena. Although he didn't know what he would say, maybe just that he was sorry for all the times he'd teased Starflight or hidden his favorite school and whined about studying. See him? asked the Skywing. He doesn't talk much. Clay snorted. Ask him to tell teach you something, like how the dragons took Pyria from the scavengers during the scorching. Then you won't be able to shut him up. I'll do that, she said, apparently missing that Clay was joking. He squinted at her. The light up here was too bright and it was even brighter when it reflected off her smoky copper-colored scales. "'Who are you?' he asked. "'Are you a guard?' Ick, "'No, I'm Peril,' she said proudly. "'The Queen's champion. "'What's your name?' "'Clay,' he said. "'What did you mean about fighting me? "'Why do we have to fight?' "'Wow, are you serious? "'Have you been living under a rock or something?' "'Pretty much,' Clay said with a grimace. "'Really?' "'She tilted her head curiously and thought for a moment. "'All right.' That's the Queen's Arena down there. She flicked her long, pointed tail at the bowl below them. There's a battle almost every day for Her Majesty's amusement. If you win enough battles, you go free. How many is that? He asked. I don't know, she said. Nobody's ever done it. Her Majesty always sends me in and after any dragon who has a few wins. And I always kill them. She sifted her wings in a shrug. I'm really dangerous. And possibly crazy, Clay thought. How many lives has she taken? Does she keep count? Does she care? What are you looking for? Peril asked. Clay had been scanning the prisoners around Circle spotting Starflight, but he couldn't see any tiny gold dragons or unusual colors. Where were Sunny and Glory? The other dragons who were brought with me. He said, Do you know where they are? The ceiling is over there, Peril said almost immediately, spiraling up above him and pointing to a deep blue dragon halfway between him and Starflight. Clay immediately recognized Tsunami's angry tail lashing. Boring, Clay, she added. I've fought plenty of sea wings. Easy ones, you know their tricks. I bet Tsunami has some tricks you've never seen before, Clay thought. What about the rain wing? She tilted her head at him. There's a rain wing here? You can't fight her, he said quickly. There's no defenses. It wouldn't be fair. I do whatever the Her Majesty tells me to, Peril said. But I haven't seen a rain wing. They didn't bring her to the arena. There's a sandwing, too, Clay said desperately. She's really small and golden and kind of odd-looking. Haven't seen any dragons like that, Pearl said. But I'll keep an eye out if you want. She does slow back-up somersault in the air and tipped her wings at him. I'd bet 
I better go warm up. Cheer for me. Peril dove towards the arena. He watched her golden glowing copper scales spiral down onto the sand below. A few other dragons were in the arena, sweeping or checking the walls or guarding the seats. Clay noticed that they all hurried to move away from Peril. Wherever she went, the dragons fled, as if she had an invisible cloud of poison around her. None of them would even look at her. Aw, that's kind of sad. I feel bad for Peril, really. But, well, we have to learn that they are going to be close friends and that she's going to help them all escape. So, it's really okay. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the rest of the speed paint, where I drew where they met and she gave him his duck. Alright, well, I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful day.